Brad Johnson here from Johnson.audio, and today I'm going to explain to you why I do not use the Slate Digital Everything Bundle. Now, Slate Digital is a plugin manufacturing company that is run by Stephen Slate, and he partners with Fabrice Gabriel to do his um, coding and development. And they have really pioneered the subscription model for plugins. So meaning you pay a monthly fee or an annual fee and you get to use all the plugins in their library. You get all updates and you get all new plugins as they are released. Now on paper, this sounds like a really great deal. And to some people, it makes total sense. But for me, I don't really like the subscription model because it's like you're renting your plugins. And I know this is a bit of a controversial topic. I know Stephen Slate will go blue in the face saying that it's better to spend a little bit of money and get all the plugins you need than to continually be investing in plugins and spending tons of money when software can go out of date, you're gonna need to upgrade it later, it has no resale value. And all these are definitely good points but you have to understand that you shouldn't be buying every single plugin out there anyway. You should be getting just a couple EQs that you really like, a couple compressors you really like, you know, some different saturation, maybe something to master with. I have Ozone 7 from Isotope. They just released a new version. I could upgrade. I'm not going to upgrade because I like I like Ozone 7. I don't need to upgrade. And so, I'm not spending thousands and thousands of dollars on my plugins. And yes, there will be a time when that upgrading might make sense, but I've been in studios that are still using Pro Tools 10 and they haven't upgraded and they don't need to upgrade and they're still pumping out awesome records and they're still getting paid for their work. So I think it really feeds into this mentality that we are constantly needing to upgrade our stuff, that we are out there having to buy all the latest and greatest to be good engineers. And you have to understand from Steven Slate's perspective, he has a company. He wants that company to grow. He wants his numbers to grow. And a subscription model is a really, really good business model because you're constantly paying into him every month or every year. And the more subscriptions grow, the more his business grows. So you have to understand his motive behind it as well. And there's nothing wrong with it. It's business. And I'm not going to fault him for it. But on my end, I don't want to be renting my plugins. I don't want to have to continually be paying for a service. I don't want to be continually paying for tools that I do not own, that I need to continually pay for to access. If I had to go into a file that I did a year ago or two years ago and I used the everything bundle, I have to now pay for it again. And I understand that it's a cheap upfront cost, but over time you are gonna be spending thousands of dollars. If you're in the engineering game for five, 10 years and you end up spending two grand on the subscription service and then you stop, that two grand is gone. And you could have taken that two grand and got yourself one nice compressor plugin or two nice compressor plugins. I mean like the MIG DSP Ultimate EQ has multiple EQs in it and I think I got that on sale for 49 bucks. And that would be basically two months of the subscription service. And that is a great plugin and it gives me different flavors of analog EQ. Now, another thing that I would like to note about subscription services and especially just this particular company is it's run by a few people. And I don't know how big the company is, but let's say, let's say that Steven Slate decides that he doesn't want to do it anymore and he sells off the company or God forbid something happens to him and that company now implodes on itself you will have software that cannot run. It might become obsolete and you might not have those updates and all of a sudden now your previous sessions aren't usable. This is something that you just have to think about. It's just like in social media. Think about these people who are on social media platforms and they have really big audiences on a Vine. Then Vine goes out of style or goes, you know, goes out. They lose their audience. They don't own their audience. They're renting the audience on those platforms. This is why email lists are so important to businesses because they own that list. It doesn't matter what happens in vogue with social media. They still own that list and they can drive that to wherever they want. Now, I'm kind of getting off topic, but I just want to drive in that point that you do not own the software. Yes, you get all this great, you get all these great plugins, you get all the updates, you get new plugins, and Steven Slate does make really good plugins. I'm not going to say they're not good plugins. I just don't like the model. I think that too, it plays into gear acquisition syndrome, thinking that you need to use all these different plugins. And honestly, I don't think I would use all the plugins in that bundle because you don't need to. You shouldn't be layering plugins upon plugins upon plugins in your mixes. You should be trying to get your tracks right at the source and then using different kinds of plugins just to sweeten those tracks. I think it really just feeds in just thinking you need the next thing, that you just need more gear. You just need more of this, that you need this analog plugin counterpart to make yourself a good engineer. And really it's just time 
It's effort. It's working on your craft. You don't need the plugins. The plugins will take you probably much the last 25% of the way. And really, you should just be investing in a, in a few quality ones and then unsubscribe from everything. Do not fall into the trap. It's easy to fall into. I have not spent thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars on plugins. And I haven't bought a plugin in a while now. And I have what I need. I don't need to subscribe to it. I don't need to continue to be renting for something. Now, I know this is a controversial topic. I know that there's lots of trains of thought out there that, you know, with one small payment, you can get access to all this stuff and you can learn. And yes, there is that, but just trust me, a lot of your stock plugins will do similar stuff. Say you don't think your EQ adds enough harmonics to it, stack it on top of a, of a saturator. You know, you can kind of figure it out and that will train your ears better than sitting there and jumping into all this modeled analog gear because really it'll make you more creative. It'll make you think outside the box. Use your stock plugins. And when you get good enough, invest in a few that will take your mix to the next level and you'll have fun playing with. But you don't have to get them all. And you don't have to continually pay month after month after month to have great mixes. I am going to stop there because I know that I could go on a huge rant about this. I get into all kinds of things about keeping your overhead low, your costs down, and you know, I just, that's about it. So if you got anything out of this video, please leave me a comment. I would love to know your thoughts on subscription models for plugins, um, renting versus owning, and gear acquisition syndrome. I would love to know if you just wanna say hello and reach out to me, just please do that as well. I'd love to hear from you. If you got anything out of this video, please give me a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe to my channel to all my other subscribers. I appreciate your continued support. I am Brad Johnson at Johnson.audio where I help you sing your story, mix your mission, and master your message. I will see you on the next video. Bye.